So guys, apparently all the news media, even the EV websites are saying, oh, electric car sales are slowing, slowing down, slowing, slowing down. Well, not in China and not really in Europe either. Now, keep in mind, put Europe and China together, 28 million plus around 16 million. Guess what? That's 60% of global car sales, 60%. And if EV sales aren't actually slowing down in those two places, are EV sales really slowing down? Well, if you're in America, you might want to say that, but that's a very American-centric view of the world. There are, by the way, car markets outside of America. Anyway, hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. France is one of those car markets outside of the US. Just, just so you know, in France, EV sales have grown by 60%. 60%. That was last month. For the year, they're up by 52% versus last year. And in France, they don't have the crazy EV incentives you guys have in the United States. Now, when I say crazy, I think they're good. I've been lambasted by subscribers to the channel for me saying, I think EV incentives are good because we need to incentivize a, a technology that's going to basically save the world. However, keep in mind, people forget this. Fossil fuels, big oil, gasoline has received hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, probably trillions of dollars of incentivization from governments over the last 10, 20, 30 years. So I don't really think that the argument people are making saying, oh, it's not fair to incentivize EVs. It's not really a true thing to say because both sides of the picture have been incentivized. EV sales, as a result, have received a boost. That's definitely true, it's helped. Now, keep in mind as well, who else did this successfully? Who is leading the world when it comes to EV manufacturing by a mile? Who's leading the world when it comes to battery manufacturing by a mile? It is China. They incentivize EVs, they still do today, and they began incentivizing them all the way back in 2005, which put them in the very powerful position they're in today. So EV sales are growing in many places. And in France, EV sales are actually up passenger EVs, 51%. However, total passenger EVs, as in a light commercial EVs as well, are up 60%. So if you equate the two together, EV sales are actually going really, really well in France. What are the best selling EVs in France? Well, I can tell you now, they're not plug-in hybrids. Plug-in hybrid sales in France are actually haven't grown much at all over the past few months. People are slowly moving away and moving to buying more electric cars. In the month of October, the Dacia Spring, the cheapest EV you can buy in Europe currently, that's an actual real car, not a quadricycle. That vehicle is made in China, by the way. It's not a European vehicle. A lot of people think Dacia, MG, oh, the European. Okay, great, we'll buy those. They're made in China, just so you know. Anyhow, that had 3,300 deliveries. That had a big advantage over the second best-selling Fiat 500, which had 1,867 deliveries. In third place was the MG4 with 1,864 deliveries. So you can see first and third best-selling EVs in France in October were Chinese. I'm going to guess most people buying them didn't realize that, but not to say they didn't. They might they might have, they might not have. I'm going to say most of them probably didn't. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Fourth place was the Tesla Model Y with 1,833 deliveries. Model Y sales and Fiat 500 and, of course, the MG4, they're all pretty much the same. All of them were in the 1,800s. So second place really was kind of an equal second place between three different manufacturers, Fiat, Tesla, and MG. For the first 10 months of the year, though, the Model Y is the best-selling electric car with 29,300 deliveries. The Dacia Spring is in second place with 24,394. The Peugeot E208 is in third with 20,427 sales. And the Fiat 500 is next with 19,328. However, for the month of October, the fifth best-selling car, so the car that was next after the Tesla Model Y, was the Renault Megane E. That's the locally made Renault electric, I guess you call it a crossover. Next was the Tesla Model 3. I believe they were all Highlands, by the way, 1,353. Some of them might have just been local vehicles, though, that were 
old stock that Tesla might have been selling at a little bit of a discount. I'm not too sure on that one, but at least some of those were the Tesla, but at least a small number of those were the new Highland version. Next was the Peugeot 208 with 1,300 deliveries, followed by the, the Mini Mini, which is actually the Mini EV with 1,300 as well. That was followed by the Renault Twingo with 700 deliveries and the Kia Nero was in 10th place with 600 deliveries. What I think really surprises me about this list here is French, the French are very patriotic and they generally buy vehicles that they believe are French. So Tesla is not French, obviously very not French. Uh, Fiat isn't French, it's Italian, so maybe it's next door, so they're okay with it, but it's also a very cute, stylish kind of car. Probably appeals to people in France. It's also more practical, it's smaller, more practical for you know a lot of French narrow streets, for example. However, whilst a lot of these cars are still French, I'm curious to know how many people in France realize that Dacia is not French and that MG4 or the MG is not a British brand. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments. But either way here, the good news is this. EV sales are still growing. There might be a little dips here and there, but actually for the year in total, they've grown significantly versus last year. Thank you for watching.